Hi, welcome to the part 18 of this video series. We are looking at some of the real certification questions for Solution Architect Associate. Today, in this video, we will cover questions related to these topics, primarily storage gateway, data transfer and snowball concepts, Lambda and RDS. So we should not wait and let's jump into the questions. But before you jump into the questions, please hit the subscribe button and click the like button if you like my videos. A lot of effort goes in to produce these contents free of cost. There are two playlists, this one as well as one old playlist on Solution Architect Associate, which is still relevant. This playlist is the latest one. Please focus on the concepts and do not bug the answers. The chances of same or similar question coming in the exam is pretty high. Please pause this video here and read the question carefully and come back. So suppose you are working for a client and that client is on premises. They don't they are not on cloud and what has happened is whatever storage devices they had it has reached its limit okay now the client is saying hey i want to move the storage system to aws while they want to keep the bandwidth cost as low as possible what it means is if so many people are trying to access the files which are now on aws like now they are on premises but in future when they go on aws there will be a lot of people from on premises they will be accessing the AWS cloud network and that storage system and they want to reduce that network storage cost. Now, what is the ideal solution? There are four options. What is the ideal solution? See here, what they are saying is move everything to Glacier Vault, okay? And use expedited retrieval. So this uh, will not be very cost effective uh, from because expedited retrieval is not uh, cheap when you go to Glacier Vault. Second, you do not put frequently accessed information on Glacier Vault. There, I'm pretty sure when they are operating on premises, these data sets are not just archived data sets, but there will be some frequently used data sets. So A is not addressing the problem of how do we address the frequently used databases or data sets or files. And expedited retrieval is not the solution for it. It will be slow. People will have to wait for the files. See what B suggests is we use we plug a storage gateway. What does a storage gateway do? Storage gateway is a is kind of a middleman between the on premises and your cloud storage. Okay. Since our question talks about low latency or uh, uh, reducing the bandwidth cost, so this will help you there. So there, there are two things. First is storage gateway. You will use cached volumes. So when you what do you mean by cached volumes? If you see this documentation in the cached volume gateway mode, what it does is your primary data is stored in, in S3. It is always on cloud, but it will retain the frequently accessed data locally in your cache on premises. And that's why you will keep the bandwidth cost low. That is how, because it is already in the cache. The second thing it will do is it will retain copies of frequently accessed data subsets locally also. So the first thing is whatever is stored in S3, the frequently accessed ones, it will cache it here. It will cache it locally in the storage gateway. And it will also store some other files which are frequently accessed locally. So this solves this problem. Okay, so what will happen is the solution must enable rapid and cost-free data retrieval. So data retrieval is cost-free because either the data retrieval will come from cached volumes, volumes or it will come from the copies that has been stored locally. See what happens in stored volume gateways, your primary data is stored locally, okay, on premises and your entire data set is available at low latency access on premises while asynchronously getting backed up on S3 also. Now the question is, why didn't we select this as an answer? You must be thinking, okay, this looks correct as well. No, this is this is grossly wrong. Not correct, nowhere near correct. This is grossly wrong. Why? Because the first thing is, we are already telling you that your storage has le uh, reached its storage limit. Still, you will keep storing it. All the new files tomorrow onwards, all the new files you will keep storing locally. So where is the space, boss? Where is the space? There is no space. Plus, you will say that from there, you will asynchronously backup. You are not doing a move. You are doing a backup. That means a second copy. So the first copy will continue to stay locally and you are already losing storage. So this cannot work. This is a wrong solution. 
Now let's look at the last option that is option D. D says we will deploy AWS Direct Connect. So what is the purpose of Direct Connect? Its main purpose is to create a dedicated network connection to AWS. It is a replacement or an alternative option for VPN and so on. So from your on-premises to AWS, you can create this. And then it is saying, you use storage gateway to store the data lo locally. Again, this is wrong because you are already out of storage limits. And then you're saying use storage gateway to asynchronously backup. So it's the same stuff. This is grossly wrong because you are already losing or already lost your storage limit. Now, how can you store locally? This solution will not work. So B is the correct answer. Now let's move forward. Please pause this video here. Read the question carefully and come back, please. See, there is a firm and what they have to do is they have to establish their infrastructure on AWS and they have to transfer all the apps to AWS. That is migrate or transfer, whatever. The, each application will require a transmission of around 50 terabytes of data. And once that transfer happens, what it says is we need to, we need a secure network connection with constant throughput between the data centers and the apps. Okay, this is the requirement. A solution architect must guarantee that data transfer occurs just once and that network connection is maintained. That means there is a one-time data transfer that you have to do. Okay, once the application moves to AWS, then the network connection should be there between on-premises and cloud platforms. So always remember the thumb rule. Whenever you have a one-time data movement, snowball, snowball, snowball. Okay, so these two options have snowball. So what has happened is the first option says, Use direct connect for both initial transfer. Initial transfer has to be snowball because it's a one time transfer just once. So A is wrong because we do not need direct connect for initial transfer. And this is also wrong because it is against our thumb rule. Why? Because initial data transfer, if you use snowball, it is dirt cheap. Okay. But uh, if you use direct connect over the network, it will happen. It is not cheap. If you use side to side VPN, it will take a lot of time. Okay. So this solution, if you have so much of data, then snowballing is required. So both C and D have snowball for the initial transfer. The only difference is C uses direct connect for ongoing connectivity and this one uses side to side VPN. See, I would choose direct connect because the reason for that is it clearly tells me that they need a secure network. That is first point one. Plus they need constant throughput, constant throughput. Okay. Side to side VPN cannot give you constant throughput. It is not as stable as direct connect. So hen hence C is my answer and D is wrong. So this is the final answer. Please lock this. Let us look at this question. So you need to give a solution that retrieves data every two minutes from an internet based third party web service. For example, uh, exchange rates. There must be a third party application where you will retrieve the data every two minutes. Like what is the exchange? For example, dollar to rupees conversion, pounds to rupees conversion and so on. So each data retrieval is performed using Python script in less than 10 milliseconds. So it goes there to the exchange and gets the exchange values and comes back in 100 milliseconds. The answer is a JSON object. What it retrieves is a JSON object, which is 1 KB in size, including sensor data. And what we have to do is we have to keep both JSON object and the data or sorry, and the date, which approach is most cost effective in meeting these requirements. See, whenever I talk about cost effectiveness, the one thing that always comes to my mind, and this is the thumb rule, always think about Lambda. So if you see the options in these options, Lambda, where can you see Lambda? We can see Lambda here in option C and option D. So options A and B are striked out that way, that way because I need to make use of Lambda. Now C says Lambda needs to be extended. So what is the difference between C and D is D will not work because it is telling you that extend the script to run in an infinite loop for two minutes. Okay, so infinite loop, what, this will not help because infinite loop, you can only run lambda it times out max in 15 minutes beyond 15 minutes you cannot do so you cannot create an infinite loop there and hence c is my answer now let's move to the next question and uh, please pause the video here if you want to read this carefully see your organization does not have any file sharing service at this point in time and your project needs a file storage okay we need a file storage that can be mounted as a disk for on-premises desktop computers. Before users can access the storage, 
the file server must authenticate them as active directory domain that means they must be registered in the ad domain which service enables ad users to deploy storage on their workstations as a drive see out of this workstation as a drive between on premises and cloud you have storage gateway here because you always remember this this is a thumb rule whenever you have to do that as a file storage this is the one see snowball edge so what is snowball edge it is used to move offline data or remote storage to the cloud you cannot plug it uh, as a file storage and mount it on a permanent basis when you get the snowball how it works is you order a snowball you will get some some box and that is your snowball device then what will happen is you will transfer the data plug it to the you know, desktop on premises desktop and transfer the data now you may say hey you know what the question is saying the you plug to the on premises desktop that is what i am doing so snowball edge should be my answer no you are plugging it just for one time to copy your data and then you will courier it back to aws so that aws can plug and transfer the data to aws cloud this is a one time activity here we are not asking for one time activity we are asking for a continuous activity where a file storage will always be available hence option c is wrong see option a glacier what is glacier we use glacier so that we can uh, store the archival sort of data so this is what the documentation says it is a extremely low cost solution and for data which is archiving or long term backup that is a two purpose two uses does the question talk about data backups or archival no it is talking about the end users will work on on premises desktops today tomorrow frequently and they will work with the files nobody is talking about archival and storage and hence a is wrong now let's come to data sync why is data sync used see it is used to transfer data between where on premises storage and where and cloud storage services and where you can you can also use between aws storage services data sync can copy between these see for example nfs smb hadoop file clusters on premises object storage snow core devices and so many things it is a transfer data transfer service it will not plug to your on premises desktop like it is saying here okay and hence this is my final answer this is the last question of this video please pause this video here read the question carefully and then please come back see there is a company they are already operating on premises they have application on premises now they are transitioning to aws cloud the usual stuff man the usual stuff they are on premises they are going to cloud and why they are going because they want to boost the flexibility and availability of the application so the present design it is using sql server database the firm wants to investigate any other database solutions if necessary to migrate their database engines and there is one operation that the production team does they take the production copy of the database every 4 hours and they will create a test database users will encounter delay during this time that is that is the pain point what is the pain point this is the pain point pain is always in red now what database should we use there are multiple choices of the databases there are there are two options which says use aurora there are two options which says use rds for sql see the first option huh? the first option why this is crap what it is saying is you use aurora with multi az deployment replicas okay so that means if there are three data centers in in one uh, region it will uh, what it will do is in one az if there are three data centers and that az is a part of region it will have read replicas in three regions and then it is saying you restore from for the, for the test database from where boss from where i will restore this does not solve my problem so a is wrong b says same thing aurora replicas restore snapshots from rds for the database when you are having data in aurora then why will you restore snapshot from rds so that means if you take too much of alcohol or weed smoke weed then you will tell b is the right answer so we should strike this out now aurora is out of question because first two have been striked out now it has to be between c and d which are both on rds c says use rds with mysql use a multi ag deployment that is fine and read replicas fantastic i need read replicas and you stand by instance boss when i have a read replicas why will i use a stand by instance you know what is a stand by instance see stand by instance is a disaster recovery solution because it creates one primary and one stand by 
and there is a continuous synchronous physical replication happening now why this solution is designed because to provide high availability and failover if primary fails then standby is available this gives you failover options without any data loss do you need failover here do you need disaster recovery does the question talk about it no then why will i use c as an answer i don't need standby instance so i am only left with the d is perfect why because first you use multi ac deployment and read replicas and then you restore the snapshots for the databases from rds itself so this is my final answer i would have appreciated see what will happen is the restore of the snapshots no like when you are creating a test database you should create the test database from the read replicas okay the question is not providing clarity on that it should be very specific that it should come from read replica then only you will be not encountering this delay during the time you create the snapshot because you have left the primary database for operations and you are taking making a copy of test database from the read replica okay so what you are doing is you are isolating these two operations that's why there will be no load no downtime or no delay man please subscribe to this channel i am putting in lot of effort to put these contents for you guys this brings us to the end of part 18 please do hit the like button if you like my videos if these contents are useful for you please drop in your comments also let me know what other certification contents or any new certifications that you are looking for please remember there are two playlist for aws solution architect associate this one and one old one the old one is still relevant okay see you in the next part stay tuned